on this episode of Wing Nuts. This was a scary ride being up here. I mean, you'd think, okay, well, that's level, but it's not because it's sloping that way. Okay, now, like, those are big. We're not going to get those out. So let, me, let me finish this side. Kind of the same way, it's like five pounds. It's, yeah, if that. That sucks. Yeah, I know it does. So what do I got here? I got the dynamic duo, or would you would you rather be Beatles characters? Now, obviously, you're the you're the walrus. That must make you the Eggman. All right. Those are almost ready to go. Okay, so Linda Cohn. Man, we need more orders. Today is Monday morning, and uh, we're coming off two bad weeks. Uh, we had a horrible week in Florida with a trade show. Uh, barely broke even on it. Last week, it was like everyone was running half speed because everyone was just tired. Production was maybe 30% last week. This week, I hope to uh, shed some light on a, on a better week. Uh, we, we got a client here, guys. Put on your smiling faces, boys. Absolutely. It's showtime. I lost mine. They make furniture, sculptures, artwork out of airplane parts. Donovan? I am. Jim Rowan. Hello, Jim. I recognize your picture yeah. from the internet. Well, thanks so much. <laughs> We've been featured in quite a few magazines uh, over the past year and a half, and due to that fact, uh, people read about us and find out our address and just drop by unannounced. Jim is an investment banker who saw our stuff on the internet. What's this off of? These are all DC9s. DC9. This, is the, this is the rear, this is the rear T-tail stabilizer. Okay. So it makes a really good working surface. Yeah, yeah. Now, a lot of these I sell for desks, a lot of them I sell for dining room tables. It looks terrific. Thank you. I mean, talk about a nice finish. This is uh, 14 feet. You know, and for my space, it is too big. But the B25 looks very, very similar to this. Well, sitting, looking yes, at you, get this. Nice big round surface texture. here. Plus the B25. Have the history. Yeah, they do. Yeah, you know, this was Doolittle's raid. Oh yeah, no, it's it's. Uh, and they were in every theater World War II. Yeah, absolutely. The B-25 bomber, the North American Mitchell, began life with a glass nose and a single 50 caliber machine gun. Later expanded to carry 20 more guns. The hero of the great Doolittle raid of '42, when a fleet leapt off the carrier Hornet to bomb the Japanese homeland and turn the tide of WW2. The B-25 bomber, from original American hero to Donovan and Dave's desk of the day. My decision is, do I go for the B-25 or the DC-9? What's the design of your house like? I mean, is it a crow? Would... The ha well, it's it's eclectic. It's going into a, a townhouse in Scottsdale. All right, well now, here's what you want to think about. Bragging rights in Scottsdale. Yeah. I've got two DC-9 deaths already in Scottsdale. Do you? Yes. So two. the B-25, would the B-25 so be the first one the in The B-25 would be the first, so if, if you meet these other guys, yeah. and they go, oh, well, hey, I got a DC-9, you go, I got the B-25. <laughs> yeah, right. Forget it, man, I got the limited edition. Yeah. I think he's gonna go for the B-25 because of its size and, and the rarity of the piece. Well, I'll uh, make my decision tonight. I'll probably do the P25. Jeez, I need, I need some money now, man. <laughs> Donovan, I, I didn't realize he had it in him, but he sold a B25 death to a gentleman who just came off the street. And he wants it delivered to Scottsdale of all places, which is great for us because we have a delivery going to Scottsdale next week. So we're gonna drive out to Chino, find the B25 elevators from uh, the gentleman that we've been purchasing from, 
get them back to the shop and try to do a real quick turnaround and deliver to Scottsdale next week when we're making the other deliveries. Tatiana, have a seat. Shoot. All right, so we have him taking the B25 yeah. hub in. Tatiana is a new assistant that I've hired uh, to help me out here. She's a, a model who worked with us in the past. Uh, I was basically influenced by both Tim and Donovan to, to hire her. I'm a little concerned. Uh, Tim's not going out to Chino with us today, and Tim has his mindset uh, that uh, he's going to uh, smooth talk his way in with Tatiana. I would say I'll probably be gone for two hours, but if you have any problems or anything, just give me a shout on the phone. Yeah. First and foremost, I believe this, that if I'm alone with Tatiana, it's probably a really good thing. Quite frankly, I'm half Yugoslavian, and so is she, so we can relate really well together. Way beyond Dave Hall and Donovan's head. What do I walk into? Nothing. <laughs> so the office is in your hands. Oh, look at the B-17. Well, we're at Aero Trader at Chino Airport. It is the haven in Southern California for World War II aircraft. Anything that's old, it's out here. Primary reason for coming out here today is to pick up uh, two rear elevators off the B-25 bomber. Hey, Carl. Hello, Carl. Carl Scholl restores vintage aircraft. His uh, main line, of course, is the restoration of the B-25, which brings us here. Carl, uh, for the last 20 years, is buying as much as he can of surplus to have enough to build a limited number of completely restored B-25s. Is that, is that your B-25? That's the one that we fly and, and uh, maintain. We take it to air shows, do different events. We've done a little bit of filming with it. Use it in the movie Pearl Harbor, a few things like that. No kidding. It's, and it's a long-term restoration. How are you? Oh, uh, this is incredible. What? What type of man hours do you have in a project like this? Oh, 20, 30,000 man hours. 20, 30,000 man hours. A lot of man hours. A, a lot, lot of man hours. A lot of hours. This was a scary ride being up here. Because here's where the bomb site went, Dave, right here. So they're looking right out there, doing about 300 miles an hour. Oh, cool. At treetop level. B-25 elevators. B-25 elevators they are. This piece is the elevator that is on the back wing. It makes the plane go up and down. It's kind of nice to see someone like MotoArt take these things and at least preserve them. Uh, instead of getting them scrapped, I'd hate to see the stuff smelted down. That's what happened with the majority of the World War II airplanes as it was. Whatever. What? It's a universal word, whatever. Well, yeah, but you can mean so much unto whatever. Well, it's all about what you interpret, and that's pretty much what it gets down to. Yeah. Right? Uh-huh. Same page. All right. Motorart David. Hi, Tatiana. Oh, he played you his music. Yeah, he, yeah, he was a musician one time. That, that was sweet of him. All right. Well, uh, li li listen, uh, just, just focus on work. Uh, ignore Tim. All right, hon, thanks. Bye. Jesus. So Tatiana calls me, right? Right. And I said, well, how's Tim treating you? And he, she said, well, he, he, okay, he, he's okay. He, he tried serenading me with his album. He's playing his music for me. Oh, <laughs> no. Don, that ain't going anywhere. Good luck, guys. Thank you, Carl. Appreciate okay. it. And we'll, we'll be out to see you soon. Okay. All, All right. right. You know where we are. We know where you are. Okay. We'll call first, though. Okay. All right. Thanks, Thank bud. Thank you. All right. Oh, my God. I'm wondering if girls are thinking about me, imagining worlds where clothes are not on me. The teacher demands I talk about history, but my time is stuck in this world of your mystery, so no, I don't know the answer. And no. Tatiana. Hey. How was your day? Pretty good. It was Tim a gentleman today. Oh, he was very nice. He was? Yeah, he was. Outside of serenading to you, he was fine? No, he played me songs and... Yeah, that's sweet. The control arm goes through here. I still don't know if this is the top or the bottom. I should look more closely at the one that was assembled out there today. Back in the 30s and up until the middle of World War II, a lot of control surfaces and even wings and fuselages were covered with fabric. 
it lightened up the plane a little bit, and the lighter the plane was, the more ammunition and bombs it could carry. This B-25 elevator, we're gonna strip all the fabric off of it because the final desk is a skeletal structure. Uh, but also we need to take it off so we can get in and get all the lead out of the leading edge because when we powder coat, it goes in the oven at 350 degrees and the lead would melt and also the fabric would burn up. A lot of little screws, huh? So Tim, so tell me about your day. How many Russian words did you learn today? None. Oh, come on. You know what? We, we have a, a complete code of ethics be between us right now. And it's like, can't talk about it, man. How, how many hours today did he spend in this office? Uh, half hour, right? No, what don't answer hour? for her. Tatiana, how long was Tim in this office <laughs> while we were gone today? Well, he's been in and out. Well, OK, add it up. Add it up. I mean, that's not her job to add it up. That's my job, because I'm the official minister and officer of communications, and I was in that office taking care of all the phone calls that you couldn't wrangle because you were out of range. He can't be distracting Tatiana from doing her work. It's costing us double the money, basically, because here you got Tatiana sitting behind the desk, focusing on listening to Tim talk to her. If you're late, call me, or about scheduling, call me. Mm-hmm. All right. And so next time, 10, yeah? Is it okay? Yeah, 10 o'clock's fine. Okay. All right, Tatiana. All right, we'll have fun. Thank you, have a good week. Tim. Tim, goodbye. We're just 60 years too late. I mean, at the end of the war, we had fighters and bombers in Germany, and instead of even bringing them home, they just took bulldozers and just crushed them right where they sat. Very cool. I mean, they, they, they fought for our freedom. <sighs> then just got mowed over by bulldozers. Whoop, look out. Look out. That was me. Actually, this end. That end, okay. Hey, uh, guys, I, I have to uh, go see my kids, so I'm cutting out. Okay. Right now, I, I'm still staying here at the shop. I haven't resolved the situation at home. The most important thing in my life at this point is, is, is my children. Regardless of what's going on here at the shop, uh, I've just slated my, my evenings to the kids. Being so close, it gives me a chance to run up there and spend some time with them, but certainly it's not enough. I mean, it's hard. It's tough. quiet here, so my two best guys and myself decided to build this desk. A World War II beauty. All we've really got to work with is this graphic. And what that shows me is that dark spot right in the middle there, I do believe is the control surface. So that's the top. Which is that. Build this B-25 desk. First of all, we have to take the rear elevator, look at it very carefully knock out any of the dents. Once we get that straight, we build the wooden base, which also has holes in it that look like the uh, internal superstructure of the wing. Uh, the hardest part of the whole thing is getting it to set level for the glass. Really tricky to have this level. I mean, you'd think, okay, well that's level, but it's not, because it's sloping that way. After we get our base to where we think it should be, then we send the wing out to powder coat, finish the base, and then when we get it back, we keep our fingers crossed and hope everything fits and it's level. Maybe we just fire up the little compressor and we'll take it outside. To let you guys do that, I'm gonna go over and get the patterns here and see what we got. I built this desk a year ago. I have my initial forms that we're gonna put together and see if everything still works the way I thought it did last year. So I was hoping it would line up with this so this two would be open. Yeah, let's, let's go down one more. 
Yeah, no, as a matter of fact, you can see the two screw holes there. That tells us more or less where this goes, that's where it was. We're, we're not too far off here. Let me have it again. Let's go over to this back leg. We're gonna try to make this B25 desk delivery by next week. We're going to Scottsdale. That means the C119's gotta be done and the moto bar with the sound system's gotta be done. We actually have two other orders in Scottsdale. Uh, the other two orders that we have, delivery was included. Since we need to deliver the other two pieces, it seems only second nature to actually deliver the B25 for Jim. In order for me to make this, or us to make this happen, everything's gotta be ready Monday morning at 6 a.m., which means we might require some OT from everyone to, to, to make it happen. So, so Without us paying overtime. Yeah. yeah. Let's, let's go back an inch and let's mark it and we'll try it on this one. We're building an entirely new coffee table out of a C-119 door. So those are the crew entry doors on the C-119 flying box car. To build a C-119 table, we sandblast it, replace the lenses in it. We follow the curve of the door and build six standoffs of various sizes and then mount them to the door which creates a level surface for the glass to sit on. And then for the base, I use a C133 magnesium nose spinner, and the door almost looks like it's free floating. The C119 flying boxcar, designed to drop cargo and troops by parachute. More than 1,100 built between 47 and 55, used throughout the Korean conflict, entered combat in Vietnam, and even saw service as a rescue ship for U.S. space capsules returning to Earth. The C-119, from Air Force Workhorse to Donovan and Dave's next great coffee table. In addition to the C-119 table, we're also going to be delivering an L-1011 moto bar to Scottsdale. The moto bar is an old flight attendant galley cart. And what we do is we sand and polish the edges, we diamond plate it, uh, we put an internal ice bucket, a really super nice sound system, and it basically becomes a mobile party bar. Everyone hates the motor bars and my design, so I gotta do it. I gotta talk to Tim today, man. It's just, we are so close to either making it or completely losing everything that we have. And it frustrates the out of me when I'm back there sanding. You know, I should be in here running the office, but I'm out there sanding. You know, and I come back and, and Tim just sits around and socializes. This isn't a clubhouse. Lay it on him, you know. All right, well, just back me up on it. If I feel like I'm rubbing you raw, just bite yeah, your lip for me. I'll bite my lip. Right. But don't get into a fist of cuffs this morning. Have you seen Tim? Wake up. All right, do me a favor. Come up to the shop and you get out. I, I gotta ask for 150% from you. Just, I want 200, that's fine. Just, just to survive. <laughs> I'd settle for 100. 80% of our business is sanding and polishing. And I guess where I'm frustrated is, is I was out there doing that motor bar yesterday and I kept walking by you and you hung out. It's like dead weight. And I, what, and, I, and, and, you and, know what, I totally understand it before we go through no, this. Let, let, let me finish. And, 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 and like when you're in here with Tatiana or you're out there talking to the guys out in the shop, what happens is they stop to listen to you. And so it's costing us double at that point because the job's not getting done. I, I think what before, before you go a little bit further on this, what you need to do is get into your checkbook and write me that check for $500 that I loaned you last week. It's probably a really good idea before you start bitching me. I, I look at it this way. This is my company. Where you're staying at, I paid for that. That little, little hole in the wall shack that you're living in right now, I paid for it. You did? I did pay for it. Is that right? When you're on my computer, I paid for that computer. Well, you know what? When I'm on your computer, I'm doing the, the, the work seat, trying to cover your ass. With the seat that you're sitting on right now, I paid for. Really? Yes, I did. Good for you. I'm, I'm going to go back to work, you guys. This, so, this is between so, so he has nothing to do with any of this at all. It's you. You paid for everything. Everything I had in my life, I've dumped in this company for the last two years. Everything. I understand I, that. I, the only thing I have left is the clothes on my back at this point. Join the club. Well, the, the, what I'm trying to get to, Tim, is this isn't a clubhouse. This is... Well, I mean, Dave, I, you know what? I've been here for a year and a half, and I've gotten three paychecks. Dave and I had a confrontation this morning. It got down to the... Uh, 
the full-blown assault on me like it always is. I understand the whole drill. Help me. Don't feel sorry Help for me. yourself. Help me. No, he's not, Tim. It's our, all of our survival. I understand that. They double-team me. They attack me about what are you doing here? Or what What's the situation? I pay for this. I pay for that. And it's like if somebody had asked me, hey, would you come out there and help me sand the moto bar? Great. That's wonderful. But don't play the guilt treatment on me and, and don't act like a baby. We gonna pull a moto bar out or are we gonna... We're gonna talk about it all day. Who's we? You and me. Come on, let's no, go. I, I gotta change, dude. Change into what? Me? Into my filthy grime clothes. Let's do this. Mary Ellen, have a seat, please. Mary Ellen is our bookkeeper that comes in here once a week, uh, super nice lady, uh, but she usually is the bear of bad news. Uh, she's always the one that says, we don't have the money in the bank, and we can't do this, we can't do that. Real quick, just what you saw this morning, is everything that we thought we deposit been deposited? Or are we? From what I could tell, yeah. Um, all right, then we got a big, big problem, because I haven't paid rent yet, I haven't paid the truck payment yet. I gotta find money. This is pretty serious. These have all got to come out. Here's the edge I did. Uh -huh. Look at that edge. What do you see in there? I see. I, I said these down here, I don't mind so much, but look at that. What about all the patina over here? You don't care about that either? I didn't do this. I just did this, this, and the curve. I didn't even get over here. But I want them all to look like this. It's got to be this degree of finish. I understand that. Okay? Yep. So go back to 100. And start the whole thing over again. Okay, now like those are big, we're not gonna get those out. So let, me, let me finish this side. You know, I, I love the guy to death. You rarely get a pat on the back or a thank you from him. And, uh, and, he's, and he's right about everything. And it gets down to it where, uh, you know, appreciation is everything. And uh, it's not really shown around here that much. I mean, once this is stable, I mean, I don't know, that, that does feel pretty good. You want to hit that with a marker yeah, and then mark good. where these rivet lines hit. Gotcha. And then that, and then we'll, uh, once we get this all drilled out, then we'll, we'll flip it over. I kind of like the looks of this one. It's real simple. Pretty good for eyeballing, look at that. We're centered this way, and that's our point of balance, so. Yeah, I think we can run with it. Donovan's under the impression that, uh, you know, I'm at his beck and call. Next thing he's gonna do is try to get me to wash his feet at night. Looks like we're on track for our shipment to Scottsdale, and it seems like a, a good plan for us to actually take our camper and our truck and load up the product uh, in our vehicle and actually drive it out. I've kind of been using it as my uh, partial living quarter, so it's scattered with clothes, so I'm gonna have to get it cleaned up so we can use it. Every time I come in here, something's damaged. I haven't been in here in four months. And all I do is I just store clothes in here. I'm not sleeping in here or anything. All right, well, let me pack. Let me get everything. I pack, hate, do your get thing. Get out of here. I don't want you seeing this place. It's kind of embarrassing, you know? It's not embarrassing, man. You're going through something in your life. It's, it's not embarrassing, you know? I mean, you got to give yourself some credit for, you know, doing everything you can to keep a small business up, being a good dad, making your mortgage payment, doing everything else in your hair. So don't be embarrassed about anything, bro. You should be proud of yourself, because I'm proud of you. Thanks, Tim. I am proud of you. I know. Makes one of us. <clears throat> How are you? 
How are you? I'm doing all right. Oh, uh, you know what I got you? It's something at the store. Here, look. I got you some. Yes. I got you some chips and cotton swabs so you can clean out your ears and listen to what everybody else has to say. Here. <laughs> I believe I'm to the point in my relationship with Donovan where we need as much space away from each other as possible because he has some kind of a psychotic short leash, leash on me and I don't understand what the situation is. He doesn't own me. He doesn't thank me. He doesn't feed me. It just doesn't get that way. Can I uh, be of any assistance? Are you guys good here or what, what can I do? No, I think we're okay, Tim. You sure? Yeah, I am sure. Okay. Um, I'm going to knock out some emails and a few things and take care of that. All right, that's fine. Try to finish wrapping up my day off. I believe tonight when I walked in and asked Donovan Thomas and Mark if they needed help, I thought four guys would probably be a little bit too much. And, you know, having the size that I am out there is, is quite ominous. Dude, after bagging on me with the moto bar, this looks like stooge land out here. I mean, look at you guys. You've been doing this for, what, the last three hours? I'm setting up to be efficient. Efficiency in its finest form. Superior to all. That's right. Superior. Is he gone now? I'm hoping, yeah. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go in there and I'm going to see about dinner. Uh, I could go for some barbecue tonight. Mark, you haven't even eaten today, have you? I ate at like 11. Well, I mean, if, if you want to do, do you like barbecue? He feels left out in this one. It's essentially what it is. Tim is not a craftsman. Tim is our uh, um, omnipotent director of communications and uh, the ambassador to all who need to eat. You know, who knows what Tim does around here? I, I haven't been able to figure it out yet. And, and here he comes again. What is on the menu? I'm just gonna bring it over and let the guys read it, man. I mean, there's an the old right. saying, if you can't beat them, join them. And then around here, it's if you can't pay them, feed them. Take a peek, figure it out, I'll buy. Right now, I'm thinking in my mind, I perhaps should put a deadbolt on that door. Sorry to step into the nourishment chamber again, but what it gets down to is this. Is that more menus? Yeah, I mean, this is it. This is the place I haven't eaten here yet, but I like barbecue, and the whole Louisiana thing appeals to me. Crab cakes. All right, I'm incorrect. Sorry, I gave Hall, 40, gave Hall 40 bucks today. I got 21, and I need to come up with another 38 bucks. For 60 bucks? You know what, I, chips? You know what, man? The way I was raised in my household, I never batted good, good food and good quality service. I'm not a cheapskate. If I got it, I'll buy everybody everything. I need 40, I need 40, 40 and bucks, and I'm putting it. Get this guy out of here <laughs> for a while so we can work. Oh, I don't want to hear it anymore. I don't want to hear you either. Okay, well then go get the food and we won't hear each other. <laughs> Simple as that. <laughs> All right, let's pull up some chairs and have some chow. All right. Chicken strips, crab cakes. Yep, looks nice. Why can't we ever get ahead? Partially, it's because I take too long to get stuff out the door. If I could get it out the door faster and a little cheaper. I need to dive in and, and steer up some more money here to keep the boat going here, but it's just one of those weeks where everything's coming together uh, and either we're gonna make it or we're gonna, we're gonna miss horribly. But uh, I think uh, everyone is focused on getting us done what we need to. <laughs> And they say I shouldn't get involved in the shop. <laughs> I mean, this is a joke. 
There's no, no direction out here. The guys are gone. Domin's out getting metal. I don't know why he's chasing metal down today. Uh, and of course, Tim is uh, nowhere to be found also. Hey, can I have a word with you and you in my office for a few minutes? No, that's you and you. Not Mark and Thomas, but you and you. Do you mean now or? I think he means What the f did you say? I mean, don't f slam me, Domin. You know, I come out here, there's nothing going on. You know, everyone knew all week long what had to go out, and I come it's out here, go it's out. 2 o'clock, there's nothing it's nothing going go on, out. no one's around here. Listen, I don't want to argue today. I don't want to argue either. Don't talk about me when I walk out of the room. It's a circus around here. Now, at your leisure, can I have a few minutes with you guys? There you go, that's polite. Uh, you guys, I love Donovan. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for Donovan. Um, but I think you know, and you know, and I know that we're not organized out there. Um, there's just so much going on. Uh, I really need you guys kind of step up the plate. Apparently I'm in the doghouse with Dave. So I want to jump on it and see if I can get some help from the guys and we'll get the stuff done. And but I just don't feel like arguing with anybody today because I'd lose for a change. Three pieces going to Arizona, a motor bar, and we're doing a C119 coffee table, and then we're doing a B25 rear elevator desk. I'm heading up to the powder coater to get these pieces up there. This time I believe we'll have them delivered and uh, I can't get the blame of Dave or Donovan saying, oh, these are scratched, it's your fault. Because around here it's the blame game. Another joyful journey on the 405. Turns into a pressure cooker. Here's our powder, powder coated right here. Ajax on the left. Bill, sir, how the hell are you? Good. Nice What's to up? see you. The powder coating process is basically simple. There's an electromagnetic charge attached to the piece that's uh, to be powder coated. And basically the powder floats out of the gun and it's drawn to the piece due to the charge. After that's done, we uh, put it in an oven and bake it for probably a half hour at 350 degrees. And uh, the results are, are quite uh, lustrous. Once again, we'll I appreciate it. Okay. And I'll decline on the ice cream again. I got to drop five. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Mary Ellen? Uh, you want to grab Tatiana and come on in here and let's kind of go over what you guys are doing today? I call the bank and it says we have $400 in the checking account. I, what happened? I, and look, I still have all our bills here. They haven't gone out yet. That's from two weeks ago. No, it's from a week, uh, is it? No, two weeks ago. We didn't even cut checks last week. All right. I, just give me the news. Let me know where we're at. Did I have some of the payable stuff? No, no, I didn't do Oh, you mean the... Tatiana seems to be working out really great, but the reason I think they probably hired her is because um, they're, they're men, and they like to have pretty women around them, most likely. 
this just gets filed now. Okay. Uh, All right, ladies. Where are we at? We're it's looking for your lost checks. Uh, Mary Allen's here, and uh, last week when she was here, she told me she was missing $1,500 of the receipts, which significantly puts me in a hole because it's less $1,500 than I thought I had to start out with. This week she's telling me she's missing $3,000 of the receipts, and it all points towards Tim Roberts at this point. It, it just, it's upsetting because in two weeks, $4,500 is unaccounted for. And, you know, and I'm, I'm calling our account, and it says we have a couple hundred dollars in the account, and then Mary Ellen's telling me we got, no, we got thousands in there. Well, you know, wonder where we're freaking bouncing checks. And Tim, his first, when I call him on the phone, because well, I told Donovan, I told Donovan, I'm like, Tom doesn't run the freaking office. Donovan doesn't know crap about the books. You know, you say your, you say your deal, and I'll say mine, because I'm about ready to blast off. Go ahead. And, and I'm going to go through this with everyone here. Everyone's taking checks out here, and I try to do my best to curtail where they're right. going at. Uh, but again, I looked at the largest one and had your name written all over it. Even, even if they don't have a, a, a receipt, the back end of the check needs to go in that file. Right. There wasn't in there, Don, uh, Tim. It wasn't in there. And, and don't, oh. don't, don't rip into me okay. about having a bad filing system because I got two gals here well, who are working all the time on trying to keep us organized. Well, I'm not going to rip into you about that at all. What I'm going to rip into Well, in I'm not done. Okay, then finish. All right. All right, it just, you know, I look at that, and, that, and that's $1,000 that, that we just lost. Because I keep a, che a check on, my, on our checking account, and you know how low we are. And all oh, of a sudden, we have $1,000 that's, that's in, it actually it was $4,500 of unenterable receipts. That means we've now overdrawn on our checking account. And it's serious, dude. Dude, I understand how serious it is, okay? All right, well, don't come in here and start beating your chest, Tim. Oh, I'm not beating my chest, I'm defending you know, myself. Look at the reality of it, okay? I got you out there spinning your wheels, then I got Tatiana out there spinning her wheels. Right. And no one's working, and it just, it's just like, I might as well get on the roof and throw money off the goddamn well, what building. The, what am I doing here? I'm with dining. What is, what are you hey, doing here? Hey, hey, you hey, sit hey, there and hey, What are you doing let, here? Right. I think you're outstanding, you're welcome here, let right? Me, well, okay, you know what? What do I got here? I got the dynamic duo, or would you would you rather be Beatles characters? Now, obviously, you're the you're the walrus. That must make you the Eggman. All right? I don't have time for this crap anymore. You guys can stick it up your. I tried to explain something, and you know he was just ready to jump down my throat with both feet. Fortunately, he wears a size nine. I don't need to be subjected to this thing without somebody even saying thank you. Uh, did you, did you have an all right day? Now can we talk about this thing in a different manner? We gotta, we gotta talk real quick. Let's discuss this. Okay, as I said, I'd like to close the door so I can, you know, at least maintain some of my privacy. Now, I understand the overstay your welcome thing and all that. Oh, and, God. But, but I've been offered something from a mutual acquaintance in a, in a role of being like a, a supervisor on his home, or on the construction of his home, rather. Basically what he's saying is he's giving me free rent and he's allowing me to stay there for a year. Well, this doesn't sound any different than what you have here. I know I have the same deal here, but it's not quite the same because this home is 5,000 square feet and it's like six bedrooms and I'd pretty much be the only guy there and it's on like three acres of property and I could get away. When I come down on you about not getting receipts in or taking Tatiana's time, don't take that personally. I, I, I know it seems like a personal attack, but Dom and I are trying to run a business here and you have to understand the, oh, understand the fundamentals of, of, of running a small business. Oh, here. I understand the fundamentals. You know, I had one for be, 10 years. Yeah. Anyway, congratulations. On Thank you. Pad, man. Thank that's, you. That's it'll, great. It'll, it'll be that's nice. Great. So does that mean I can move into your pad next door? Because that's got a bed. At first when I was approached by my friend, I was really, really apprehensive about it because I felt, you know, deep in my heart, I was really a part of this family around here and I really meant something around here to these guys, but obviously, you know, I'm being treated like the black sheep. I guess what he's trying to tell us is, hey, don't give me crap because I'll just run out, run and go hide somewhere. Um, but I don't expect him to go. You know, he's been here this long, he's taken abuse this long, he'll, he'll stick around. There's a chemistry between those two that 
you know, sometimes, no matter how civil you try to have a conversation, you know, the heads start budding, the sparks fly, and tempers rise. Uh, but anyway, I, I think Dave made his point. I didn't actually catch when Tim said he was moving. I think it might be a week or two. Uh, actually, now that I know he's going, uh, I'm, I'm almost starting to miss him a little bit. But uh, in reality, I think it'll be really good for his head. It'll give us all a little bit of breathing room because it's, it's been really tough with the three of us being here. Well, we're just kind of getting today kicked off. My last conversation with Donovan was he seems to think we're on track for Scottsdale, which is a, a big relief on my end. We have all the components for the moto bar minus the antenna. So we're only missing one part at this point, but it's still, it's enough for Donovan to get going on it. Uh, Thomas looks like he has the uh, C119 almost ready to go. And I know Mark has been working fast and furious on the uh, base of the B25 desk. I got confirmation today uh, that the powder coater is gonna be making a delivery and also Western Glass will be delivering the, the nine foot piece of glass for the desk. That should take care of all the components that make Scott still happen. I briefly talked to Tim this morning. He seems calmed down from last night. Um, we'll probably have a little chat later on today. JD, how's it going? Doing good, how you doing? Good. JD is a supplier and vendor for Moto Art and He's a very hands-on kind of guy, and it just seems like every time we're in a crunch, trying to get stuff out the door, we need to get something built, he always shows up. Much, much better. We got all those blotches out of there. Yes, sir. Oh, you're kidding me. So when, when, when are you going to get here with the powder coating? <sighs> All right, well, Dom just walked in, so I got to go. They're delivering it, but chances are it's not going to be here till 7. Tonight. Maybe 7.30. Tonight. Tonight. That means everyone's on OT starting about yeah, an hour. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be a long night. Dave Hall, come out and see what the other half does. Ooh. That looks really nice. Kind of the same way, it's like five pounds. This is great, dude. That's Granny Smith, right? Yeah. Hey, Tim, help him set her up on the table. For Pete's sakes. It's been another long weekend. We got the C119 done. The motor bar is finally assembled and ready to go. Uh, we still have work to do in the B25, though. That's really beautiful. Go big. There you go. Can I put the glass on it? Oh, Dave, does that look sharp? It's young, it's hard. If I know they're playing, tear it apart. And tear it apart. It's young, it's hard. If I know they're playing, tear it apart. And tear it apart. The big test. Here you go, act like you're working. Oh. 
my god, what a rough room. The bubbles in the level, guys. That's pretty darn good. That's very nice. That looks radical. Oh, it does. It's a very tasteful piece, it really yeah, is. I, I, I agree with what you said, it wouldn't look good if it was hanging over. Let's admire it for a night before we have to ship That's it right. out. <laughs> this is the only time we get to enjoy our own stuff. Boys, what I do want to say is great work. Let's go get this stuff to Scottsdale, huh? We'll get some deliveries to make in uh, Phoenix and Scottsdale. Probably I'll take the first shift. Get us out of town and uh, Dave and Tim will probably flip a coin to see who takes it from there. And they'll probably both be snoring the whole way. Our first stop is uh, in Phoenix here, and we're going to uh, Stewart and Maryland's. Uh, we're here to deliver the uh, the motor bar and the C119. We're here. We'll well, see, you see you again. I don't think we met Stuart. Stuart. Dave Hall, nice to meet you. We have uh, the motor bar and your C119 door. So you're the very first to have one of these C119. Yeah, you got the you get the first one. And uh, I'm excited. Right there, I'll pass the torch to the. Admiral here. Oh, good. I'll drive it on in. This is for your CDs. Go in here. The <coughs> remote control. You can put various libations in the back here. Get all the way out here to Arizona, and we uh, pack things as careful as we thought we needed to. And unfortunately, we've got some chafing marks in uh, the top of our table. We blew it on this one. I'm disappointed. We're going we're gonna to have to replace this. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, I know it does. There's nothing we can do about it. Tim packed this one, right? Here comes the blame game again. Oh, yeah, here we go. All right, let's take it in, guys. Where's it going? Well, they're next to our the bomb tables. Don, would you like to tell Marilyn the bad news? Yeah, the, the paint got chafed on this on the way out here, so we're going to have to replace your piece for you. I don't think Dominic gets the full grasp of when we screw up like this. It, it just doesn't cost us another piece. It's the time and everything that goes back into it. It's just enough to make me want to puke because we can't run a business this way. You can't deliver something and say, hey, we're going to replace it. And this, before you know it, you just lost the whole game. Dave. Thank you Thank very you. much. Hey, yeah, Stuart, to meet. pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you. Gonna... Sorry we screwed nice it up, you, but we'll fix it. I promise. Thank, Thank you so you. much. All right. Okay. Thanks, guys. Have a good trip. We'll see you guys. Thank you, we'll right, you, guys. Well. Thank you again. Bye -bye. Delivering the third piece today uh, for Jim. His uh, space isn't finished yet, so we're delivering it to the airport in Scottsdale. Jim wanted to be there, but he had a business emergency, so unfortunately, we're not going to have a chance to see him. Please be in one piece. Please be in one piece. So far, so good. That's why we brought him. <laughs> <laughs> Getting this piece delivered unharmed was uh, our main focus. Go! Oh, what's wrong with you guys? Come on. It's a long journey out here. Uh, having damaged the one coffee table was a, a definite bummer yesterday. But I think the trip was saved. This turned out just incredible. I love this piece. You know, we're just gonna have to go back and knock out some more orders. You know, back to business. I mean, it looks beautiful, Don. I mean, it truly is. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Good job, brother. All right, thank you, Dave. I appreciate it. You driving? Yeah, I'll drive out of here. Let's get the heck out of Dodge. <laughs> <laughs>